Hi there, Mona Lyons here. I want to talk about our beloved pets today. A lot of people, some people specifically, have been asking for a while, where do our pets go? I want to know what happened with my precious pup or my kitten or my my parrot that I raised since it was a baby. And the answer is pretty simple, but there are a little bit of delicate intricate things that go into it when our loved ones that are pets pass over. And what happens is it's very different from earth souls uh, as far as human souls. It's different because the conscious, the consciousness level is different. But at the same time, the intentions of their love and their purity is the same. So what happens is, is God greets them in heaven immediately. They're never lost and they're not stuck on earth like some human souls would be, such as being an earthbound soul. This is not something that you would ever have to worry about with your pet. So if you've ever been thinking about this, please know and reassurance and alleviate that fear that that's not what happens with pets, with animals. And the reason why is this. Even though we are all spiritual beings having a human experience. Pets have a very, very powerful psychic connection more than human souls. And the reason is, is because they're so pure at heart. Now, do I have any other answer for that? No, that's really just all I know so far. But what I have also discovered is they also are not bombarded with the ego like the human consciousness is. So because of this, they don't have the fear of death just like humans do. They don't have the fear of from religion. They don't have the fear from their superstitions or their doubts or more importantly even just their status in life. They look at people, they look at other animals as equal. And the reason why this is is because again they're not bombarded, they're not affected by the ego. So they, when they cross over, they go to the other side where their soul knows where they belong, which is a better place than here. Now when they depart, do they suffer pain at times, like if they got hurt by another animal, or maybe uh, when they cross over, did they suffer like a, a stroke or a heart attack or a seizure? This is something that does happen with their soul when they do go to the other side. But please understand, when I say this, it's not because they deserved it. It's more of their, their souls signed up for that experience, just as we signed up for our experiences. Does this mean that every single bad thing that happens to us is something we chose to experience? No, because there is still free will and there is what's called nature, which happens to us all, such as an illness. Sometimes it wasn't planned and it just happens. But that's a whole other topic. When it comes to our pets, people have asked me, do they know that they died? Of course they do. They're more psychic than we are. They, they're just as psychic. But the reason why I say that in that way is because humans are psychic as well. We all have the ability of being psychic and being mediums. However, the difference with animals is they are more in tune to the psychic sense, to that sixth sense, more inherently than human souls because again they're not bombarded with the ego and because of this they intuitively respond to whatever is happening to them without doubt and without questioning those thoughts or those feelings and they just respond to it uh, animalistically and uh, psychically so in fact when you think about animals what do they normally do when it Oh, and I just saw two birds fly by really fast. I don't even know what kind they were, but that's funny. Um, but what do animals normally do when there's an earthquake or when there is a tornado on the way or when there is a hurricane on the way or something changes in the weather or something's about to happen, a natural catastrophe of some kind? You'll notice that the animals will immediately start to retreat before it happens. They'll start reacting. They'll start acting differently. The reason why this is is because they psychically and intuitively already know before humans do what's about to occur. And so because of this, they already have this innate gift inside of them just like humans, but they're stronger at it. Uh, in fact, they can even tell 
uh, and see spirits more often than humans do. In fact, they usually have no problem seeing spirits every single day. In fact, I believe from what I've experienced so far, what I've learned so far, animals see spirits. They are literally psychic mediums themselves. So in that sense, we can learn a lot from our pets because they can actually give us amazing headway uh, in case there were, let's say, a dark shadow or something that you didn't notice at first at standing at the edge of your bed and your dog or your cat start hissing or growling or acting funny and they're reacting to that thing that you can't see, it's because of their psychic ability and their mediumship they see because they live between both worlds just like mediums, just like psychics do. And so they don't, they don't have that problem with responding to it immediately knowing whether or not intuitively and energetically whether or not that entity that is approaching them is negative or positive and so this is where their animalistic nature their psychic nature comes in and again because they don't second guess those things they're able to respond to it soundly without any problem um, the other question that I get from people a lot sometimes is do they get lost when they cross over and the answer is a flat out no because they don't end up stuck on the earth realm. So when they go to the other side please know that they are always in heaven immediately. They are never lost. When I lost um, my bird sweetie when I was a teenager, uh, when my sister also lost her her uh, dear beloved cat Buddy who had mouth cancer um, something along those lines in his mouth and it made his cheeks really big it was big it was terrible he was in a lot of pain and he was the most loving cat and my bird was amazing and we had these pets for a very long time we grew up with these pets and when they died it was devastating to both of us but in my near-death experience a few weeks after a few months after she died and I had my near-death experience, I was greeted by my pet, Sweetie. And she was the most healthiest, lovable, smart, funny, amazing, charming bird that I've ever encountered in my life. And it was, it was magical. I mean, she wasn't even a parakeet anymore. She was a different kind of bird. They can actually change into what they want to be, what they feel. They can even create their own species in the other side. They are literally untouchable to interchangeable ways to be whatever they want to be. When it comes to Buddy, however, my sister's cat, it was difficult for him because he ended up dying very painfully. He, he undergone a very long transition of his passing. And when I say that, I mean he was basically dying slowly because of this cancer going through his mouth. And my parents couldn't afford it at the time. We didn't know really what was wrong. We actually thought maybe his cheeks were just like that. We were not aware. And when my parents finally took him to get seen, that's when we discovered that it was best to just put him down because he was in so much pain and there was no way it was gonna, it, he was basically dying slowly. And so when, I'll never forget it, when he was put down, I watched it and it was devastating because I've never seen an actual animal or a person die in front of me before. And when I saw this, you could you knew his soul, his spirit was no longer in that body. And it was heart-wrenching, it was gut-clenching, it was the worst worst feeling, one of the worst feelings ever. I felt like I lost one of my best friends. But then that same night after he died, my sister, we were sleeping in bunk beds and because we're twins and we had to have everything the same and uh, my sister was on the bottom and I was on the top bunk because I liked the top bunk and uh, she woke me up in the middle of the night and she goes, Melinda, and she tapped the, the top of my bunk and she goes, Melinda, you will never believe what just happened. And she woke me up in the middle of the night and I went, what's wrong? What is it? And she goes, I just saw a buddy. I went, what? What do you mean? And she goes, I saw a buddy. Like I just had this amazing dream of buddy. And I said, wait a minute, hold on. And I got off the bed and I just sat right in front of her and I listened as she described that she had this amazing dream of buddy where he walked into the room and the atmosphere changed and he was healthy and beautiful and happy and he was no longer in pain anymore 
and he even told her this in some aspect and he came up to her on her lap and just letting her know that he was no longer in pain and it was such a beautiful reunion for them because they had such a strong bond so whenever you have dreams of your pets just know that that's because they came back to tell you that they're okay that they're no longer in pain and more importantly that they're not lost and they're not confused where they are and the other great thing about our loved ones even our, even our pets is they can actually come back to the earth realm to visit and be with us whenever they want so if there's ever a time when you're doing dishes and you feel a touch along your leg and you're like hmm that feels like a cat and I, that happens to me a lot and I'll go, I just feel like there's a cat rubbing against my leg and you'll look down, there's nothing there. That's because their souls are gently letting you know in those different aspects, those different examples, that they're there, that they're still around, that they're still loving you and appreciating you and showing you their love in a very special bond that no person can ever replace, no other animal can ever replace. And that's another thing they're bringing up to me right now. Don't feel guilty, because I'm hearing this from the pets, don't feel, don't feel guilty about ever having another pet in your life. The reason why a lot of people feel guilty about this, because sometimes they think, oh, what if I'm just replacing him or her that I lost? Know that when you lose a loved one, you gain another loved one. When you lose a job, you gain a job, right? When you lose love, you gain a new love. So whenever there's a loss, there's another gain. And so in this transition, this is where it helps us to continue that love flow. This is where it helps us to continue that high vibration of forgiveness, of, of tranquility and peace, and more importantly, that love energy. And a lot of the times, our pets, just like our departed loved ones, like our family and friends or our spouse that pass away, they can play Cupid and pick the other pet that will be best for you and find ways with God to manipulate the, the atmosphere, or as far as, not manipulate, but plan things very specifically to help you to reunite or to unite with this new pet. And this is one of the best gifts because it allows you to heal through a new love. So you're not replacing that love, you're just healing through a new love. And this is one of those beautiful things about spirit because they always know what's best for us on how to heal and how to move forward. But I hope this answers some of your questions today about your pets. If you ever have any other questions, thoughts, or concerns, or ideas, you can leave your comments below. But if you also feel that you lost a pet and you would love to connect with that pet, I do connect with people's pets. It does happen. It's, it's very weird at first sometimes. It was weird for me at first, but it's a beautiful thing and it's actually really cool because you're talking pet, basically. It's like being Dr. Doolittle only for dead people and spirits. But um, if you ever have any questions, thoughts, concerns, or ideas, again, leave comments below, or you can go to my website at lastfrontiermedium.com. Please don't forget to subscribe and share. But the other thing that I want to add is I do give away a free reading for every 1,000 new subscribers on my channel. So, and if you're ever wanting to get your chance to win, because there's always a chance to win, you can leave um, on my website, there'll be a link on the front page where you can go to the actual page to apply for your chance to win and you'll get all the information there and, and what I usually require in your application. But there's no other reason why you shouldn't, right? It's a free reading, why not? And, uh, and if you get chosen, I also like to usually share your experience on my channel. But I wish you all the love and light and God bless.